laughter is a sin around here. You know why? Because laughter can mean happiness. And I want you boys to always know, happiness don't exist for you. It exists for the privileged, for the loved. The world outside don't care about you. So laughing is just pretending. And this ain't make-believe over here, Uh uh-uh. This here is a home for the wayward, for the orphaned, for the discarded. I am setting you up to succeed. Because y'all too stupid to know the truth. And you'll thank me for this when you get old enough, okay? Believe me, you'll thank me for telling you the truth. I hate to have Tennessee to move around, you know? I hate that I'm losing this game of cards. I hate you asking me questions. Frank Stone, I neither hate him nor like him. I'm a professional headmaster. I'm objective. I'm not a homosexual. I'm a pedophile. It's different. Okay? I teach them boys who they are. So society wants to kill it. These boys up here, who do they got on by each other? Just boys. They gotta learn how to love each other. So I teach them how. I don't mess with no men. I'm married. He's a degenerate. He's outside the bounds. He's on the other side of the street. I'm walking down the street, right? The right street. He's across the street. Always has been. Working for the mob. Who do you think he is, Al Capone? Listen to me, you stupid jerk-off. You're not my boss, so don't talk to me like that. If I want to get some action off some broad, I will, okay? That's my business. I thought you acted inappropriately. You trying to get us popped for rape. 
It's time I just fucking kill you. No! frustration of sin. I feel the frustration of sin. Let me tell you, if you don't already know, sin is the apple that's put in front of the horse. It was the apple presented to Eve in the Garden of Eden. And it's the apple of my eye when I see that nice little rump on all of you. It's mine to take. I'm a headmaster. That's like God. That's like the final say, okay? <laughs> I take, I give, I surrender. But make no mistake, it's still me, not you. None of you have a claim or say. I am the last word, okay? Right, I know it's not right. Hold on that shit. Amped up, it's in their veins. It's like well, that's pill. like the energy drink, right? Yeah, it's their method drink. The first energy drink. Method. Method. First energy drink ever. And they're the first guys talking shit all the time. You better, you in? Yeah. Hey yeah. Frank, how you doing? Sit down, sit down. What do you have for me? Job as always? A couple of bumps in the road, but I paid them over as always. Yeah, I heard. You know, you're one cold hearted son of a bitch, Frank. You know, took out his own guy. You know, it remind me of this uh, bedtime story that my father, God bless his soul, that he used to read to me as a kid. It was about an evil bastard, j j just like Frank, I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh, Frank, did your father ever used to read you bedtime stories? <laughs> <laughs> I never knew my old man told me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Frank. I didn't know. I didn't know, Frank. I didn't know. Give him his money. The money. Okay, Frank. Here's your money. Thanks, Tony. Hey, Frank, I got a question for you. Now that you got all those fazools in your pocket, which one of your broads you gonna take out? <laughs> maybe, maybe take a shower. Prepare <laughs> <laughs> to someplace more high end, romantic like Coney Island for a hot dog. <laughs> Need anything else, Tony? <laughs> no, that's it. Thanks, Frank. Good work. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> 
nice day, fellas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take it easy, Anson. Where guys break his balls for? He's a good right. Anyway, it's Steve. All right, come on, let's play cards. Come on, come on, right? come on. Why don't you get him some shampoo? Come on. Official tone. Good thing. Now, like this here, keep you warm in the winter, dry in the summer. A happy thing. Animal skin. Like this belt here, see? It's leather, animal skin, but it has many different functions than just holding my pants, you know? Tie a woman down and shoot. Be a good thing too. Sometimes depends on the girl. Those women are hard. To, hard to feel the wings sometimes. You know, it's romantic. Feeling for the punishment and a, you know, rub on your hand like this or on your fist like this. Bam! No more problem. That man go down. He's going down! Turn around. No. Turn around! Grab your ankles. But you don't listen. Fix your radio, I'm gonna teach you how many uses this belt has, all right? And this is a romantic use for it. this was. It's a good thing they closed it. It was horribly run. Ah, those poor boys, they used them like punching bags. That's what, that's what I heard. <laughs> it's a good thing we didn't go there, huh? Dominic was loaded as usual. He loved to drink, which was a good thing because at this point he had to drink. If he didn't start his day by rolling out of bed and crawling to the freezer for a few shots of vodka, his hands would shake and he'd start to feel sick and he'd become as manic as a mental patient. But what are you gonna do? Everybody's got to cross the...
Dominic was a drunk and would always be a drunk, but he was okay with that. He was the heartbreakingly tragic figure he always wanted to be, but with an indomitable sense of humor that made him borderline heroic in his own mind. Sure, he was destined to crash and burn, but it was going to be epic, if not entertaining. He had already come close to cashing in once. A couple of winters back, he was found passed out in his box of shorts on the boulevard during a failed attempt to get to a liquor store. He spent the next five weeks in the hospital. Initially, the doctors didn't give him much of a chance. Dominic's liver was shot. He was completely yellow with jaundice. His skin was yellow. The whites of his eyes were yellow. If he'd been wearing a top hat and a monocle, he could have passed for Mr. Peanut, but somehow he survived. Supposedly, the liver is a highly regenerative organ, or so they told him. The doctors had lectured Dominic about how he was being given his second chance to live and how he needed to make some serious lifestyle changes. All right. and... Thank you. Thank you, Bradford. Uh, anybody have any questions for Bradford? Class? Yes, Ackley? It didn't do anything for me. Okay. Um, okay. It, okay. I'm sorry. That's what I'm you sorry. Felt. That's what you felt. That's okay. Didn't okay. Do, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Okay. No, if that's just, what you felt. It, yeah. Yeah, I, I just feel like it just, it, it lacked emotion. Yes, Jackie? I, I have something, Mr. Benson. Okay, Jackie, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Jackie, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, he never stayed long, never. He liked Rosemary's company, but always seemed to be in a hurry, like he had a dual life or something. But Rosemary didn't mind. She was lonely, and lonely women cry at night. Rosemary got sick of it. That's why she wore her fancy bottle of perfume and best dress. She wanted him to caress her like a mink coat. But it didn't happen this time. Rosemary wept after he left. She thought about swallowing that whole bottle of pills, but decided not to. She didn't want any man thinking someone killed themselves for him. Rosemary instead painted a horizon on a canvas. It seemed brighter than her future. You all right, Jackie? Yeah, no, I, I just get nervous sometimes. OK, uh, what do you call this story? Oh, god, I, 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 guess, uh, I guess I'll call it um, The Girl in Apartment 3J. All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Jackie? Yes, Ackley? Yes, I was wondering how long uh, we're going to have to hear about these desperate characters of yours, the same characters from the last story that you brought in. I mean, when are we going to hear something good for a change, something what? with more, uh, more levels? More, I want more. I want more. Uh, I'm so but, sorry, Mr. Herman Melville. I wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't be caught dead reading Melville. Excuse me, Ackley, Ackley, we could do without that. Well, there... I the whole function of this creative writing class is to learn and experience and to grow. I, I yeah. I, we, we do not need to criticize to the extent that you take it to. Oh. Jackie, what, do you, what were you feeling when you, when you uh, wrote this particular passage to your story, the, the, uh, the lonely girl in apartment 3F? No, it was the girl in apartment 3J. But I like that, the lonely girl in apartment 3F. But um, she, okay. she's afraid of being an old maid, and uh, you know all of her okay, friends Jackie. are wondering. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to read? No? Uh, I would like to read yes, my Ackley? piece. I would like to read my piece for the class. OK, but, uh, can you make it quick? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. So this, this is like an ongoing, uh, it's part of a trilogy. I'm, uh, you speak of ennui okay, and, all right. and hollowness. Class, class dismissed.
are certain things in a in life. There are certain things that are passed down to life, you know? Like father and son, huh? Uh, in our case, uh Headmaster to uh, Orphan. Like a like the love of hunting. Yeah. Killing. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Fishing? Fishing? Yeah, fishing will work. Yep. Today though, I'm gonna introduce a new tradition. From a long line of traditions between a headmaster and orphan, that's called uh, sharing a bottle of bourbon. It's good. Uh, good for you. Um, it's good, you know what I mean? Uh, take your mind off of things that, uh, you know, get your mind off of things that bother you about yourself and stuff. Purify your soul! Got one. What do you think them priests be doing in church with their wine? Drunk. <laughs> Want to taste? Here, here, have a taste. I said to, to have a taste. There you go. Not too strong? Huh? Too strong? Whoa, hey! That's enough there. Come on, give back. Give back, it's mine. It's mine! Give back! It's a gift. It's a gift to you. It's mine. Take your pants off. Y yes, may I help you? I would like to take your creative writing class. Great. Uh, have a seat. Thanks. Is there any particular reason you'd like to join my creative writing class? No. Well, have you ever written anything before? No. Nothing. No poetry or uh, news articles. Okay. Uh, name? Oscar. Kissel. Okay. Oscar. A lot of people have come in here, like yourself, that they have a lot to express and they don't know how. Well, creative writing will help you with all that. Um, I'm going to give you an assignment. I want you to go home and write about something you know or like, but make it fictitious. Uh, if you like flying on planes, write a story about an airline pilot. Or if you like uh, walking in the park on Sundays, write a story about a softball player that does well in that park on Sundays. Whatever it is, do it thoroughly. Get into details. I want you to make our class believe in your character that it's real, and then we'll feel for them and their problems, okay? Softball player?
Isn't that sweet ass you got for a creative writing teacher to tell you to write about stuff you know? Well, you know about the darker things in life, don't you? So write about that. Now get back on that typewriter and write about that. You mangy looking bastard. Come on. I learned you better than that. Go. I never knew a shade darker than his soul. That's what everybody used to say about Frank Stone. Like a clap of thunder, he was brought into the world. And like a flash of lightning, he lived. And that was pulling off jewelry jobs. <laughs> it was his vice. Gave him comfort, control. And he would stop at nothing to get it done. Nothing. He was as serious as a heart attack. <laughs> but how can one live when laughter can't soothe their soul? Frank knew he was dead inside, born dead. Didn't understand why. Only certain things made sense to him. Like being found in a dumpster on Christmas Eve on the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck. No. That can't be good. <laughs> that was clear. That's exactly what the syndicate looks for too. Men with rage. Frank was the most comfortable in this kind of environment, and so was his boss, tough Tony Forte, local punk gangster with a long arm, though. Well, always, always gave, gave Frank, Frank work, work whenever the need would arise. Unfortunately for Frank, that need came about on a regular basis. He couldn't wait to get that call. It's the only time Frank seemed to come alive. That was just the way things were in his world. Hard, cold. That was Frank Stone. That's all I got so far. Thank you, Oscar. That was interesting. Does anybody here have any questions for Oscar? Yes, Ackley. I'm sorry, but that sounded like a, a gangster movie from the 1940s or something. You know, like just so totally fake. And like not it just no one in real life sounds like Frank Stone. Except, you know, since World War II. Philip, uh, Ackley, once again, I, I, we are not here to judge. We're here to analyze and interpret. Does anybody else have any questions for Oscar? Yes, Jackie. Um, well, I thought it was good. Like, I really liked it. Um, it reminded me of one of those, like, crime novels. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that they sell in the bus depots. You know, those things that you know, they're supposed to take your mind off the journey you're about to go on, and, you know, I love those things. Like, I, I was once on this bus trip from Virginia to New Mexico. Yes. They're meant yeah. to, like... Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Does, does anybody else have any questions for Oscar? Okay, if not, we'll class dismiss.
Groovy Brothers, Vic and Ronnie, I presume. We're here. Start talking. I like your manners. Sit down. This job we're gonna pull is in the Diamond District. This place is an upstairs distribution. The way it works, the guy's got a go between. He carries the diamonds down in a little briefcase. He doesn't take the elevator, he uses the stairs. It's bona fide, I checked it out. That's what we'll make that. How many stones are you gonna be carrying? 150K minimum. What's our kind? It's a flat rate. 25 grand each. <laughs> 25. What, are you crazy or something? We split it three ways and we ain't interested. Fuck these diamonds, they're rare. No fence in New York is gonna deal with them. All you need to know is it's gonna take time and money. And that's the rate, 25K. Nah. Split it three ways or nothing. Nothing it is. You know, I was told you guys were professionals. I guess I was told wrong. Ah. Sit. Does that mean you're in? Yeah. All right, you got any other questions? Yeah, I got one question. Me and my brother, we heard a couple of things about you. We need you to clear it up for us. You heard some things like what? That whoever works these jobs he has, they never get seen again. Let me tell you something, fellas. People, you know, they talk all the time. They talk for a lot of reasons. Envy, jealousy, greed. All you need to know is if you square with me, I'll be square with you. I'll be in touch. Hi. How you doing? You're new here. I'm Jackie. Well, actually, we met the other day, uh, kind of. Yeah. What's yours again? What? Your name, Dum Dum. Um, Oscar. Oscar Kissel. Hmm. So, like, what are you hoping to be? A mystery writer or something? I don't know. My God, is that tight? Do you. Did you use a typewriter? I didn't even know they were around anymore. I like typewriters. Hey, what's that? Ah. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, uh, class, everybody take their seats. We're gonna start. Monday, late afternoon. Diamond District. And Frank Stone gets ready. A large Romanian man comes out of an office with a briefcase full of bling. But today, that large Romanian gonna be in for a surprise. Mă face să râd. Voi pedicilor, vrei să mă furați? Ha! You two midgets, you think you can rob me? Try it. Price is a fortune in here. Nice. Grab the bag, let's get out of here. I think there's only enough for me and my brother. What? You heard me, you dirty double. It's called the double cross. Or the dirty double cross. Someone turning on you is one of the unfortunate hazards in this line of work. Luckily for Frank. He's always expecting it. Oh, that's interesting. 
It, it really is getting more and more cohesive, Oscar. Keep it up. So, I, uh, I just want to know what goes on in that head of yours. What do you mean? Well, how do you get your stuff to sound so real? Like, I don't know, I, I just... I, I feel like I'm in the same world as your characters. Like, it's... I don't know, I just write whatever comes into my head. Wow, I mean, Frank Stone is so cold. Well, I mean, he's a lot of demons in his past. They're gonna stay there till he gets rid of them. He doesn't trust anyone. That's how he survives. Have you always had this kind of imagination? Did you read those recommended books the teacher told us about? I didn't read anything. You're so serious. But you're modest, too. Can you uh, pass me the sugar? Boo! Oh, sorry. Thanks for giving me a ride home, Oscar. That's nice. Well, oh. when did you uh, start dressing like a little tugboat captain? <laughs> you know, do you like the open sea? Hello? Yeah, you, you, uh, you don't. You don't give that much. You really don't talk that much. Oh. Are you hungry? Once you come upstairs, let me make you a fluffernutter sandwich. Mm hmm. Have you ever had one? I I can tell you haven't had one because like your eyes didn't light up when I said it. You're missing out. Do you want a beer? No, thanks. I don't drink. You don't drink? Oh. What are you, a Boy Scout or something? How about a glass of milk? That sounds good. What's the matter, Oscar? I don't know. Something strange is that. What? The horse on the glass here, you know, reminded me of something that happened to me when I was a kid. You know, I was raised in an orphanage. And one day, me and all the other boys, we were all taken on a field trip. But when the bus got there, first thing that I saw was this beautiful gray horse. So I approached the horse really slowly, and, and I was talking to him softly, you know, the way a kid would. And all of a sudden, the horse, he went nuts. I mean, he went totally haywire. He started jumping up on his hind legs, kicking. He broke free from the chain, and he started to scare the other horses. Horses do weird things like that sometimes. Yeah, when I had Master, he got so angry that he grabbed me and he started to beat me publicly right in front of the other boys. That headmaster sounds like such a jerk. And after that, all the kids, they laughed at me. They humiliated me, mocked me. And I'll tell you, that headmaster, 
master. After that, I ain't never missed an opportunity. Yet. Let's change the subject. Talk about something else. Hey, Oscar. <laughs> It's Mr. Personality. You came here to brighten up everybody's day, now, didn't you? I got a question for you, scumbag. How come you make everybody sick at the very sight of you? You got the personality of a cobra, and I've had it up to here with that. Come on, Vinny, knock it off. Sit down. You have to excuse Vinny, Frank. Anyway, how you doing today, Frank? Doing good, Tony. Can I get you anything to eat? Uh, you don't have to be shy. We have plenty of food. More coming out. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. No? Give him his friggin' money. Let him get out of here. Oh, 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 Frankie, Frankie. You know, not for nothing, but we offer you food all the time. And never once, once do you ever sit down and, and, and eat with us. What's the matter? My, my gesture of friendship doesn't agree with you? Look at me when I'm talking to you, Frankie. Now, I want to know why you think you're too good for us. It's not that, Tony. It's just... You know, I got some place I gotta be in a hurry. A hurry? <laughs> Where you gotta be, Frankie? Somewhere. Frank, the only place you should ever be in a hurry to get to is home. Because home is where the family is. Here, look, look, let me show you this. This is my family, all right? This is my wife, my kids when they were younger, my grandkids. And this, this is the most cherished picture I have of my father. God rest his soul. You know, I, I loved him more than any son ever loved a father. What about you, Frankie? Do you have any pictures of loved ones you would like to show us? No? Why not? You're always in such a hurry. I would think that you had hundreds, hundreds of pictures to show us. Now, the next time, that I ask you to sit down and eat with us. Make sure you have the time. All right, now get the hell out of here. Thanks, Tony. What did you say? What did you just mumble? I said thanks, Tony. So anyway, about this weekend. Nothing more frustrating than a man who just can't express himself. You know, tell you how he feels. Mm. That makes him no different than a lamp or a, you know, a clay pigeon. Yeah, a clay pigeon. Waiting to get blown up into pieces. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's the root behind Frank Stone's rage. He just lives, second to second, minute to minute, murder to murder. You know, like an alcoholic, just one day at a time. That's my boy.
Haven't seen my love again God knows when He ran away Now I'm all by myself All of this heartache and is affecting my health Oh no Wasn't she great? Chelsea, let's give it up for Chelsea. We're a great girl, nice act. And now next, he's your favorite friend, Twilquist, Mr. John Peasy. Hey folks, my name is John Peasy. This is my friend Smokey. Holy shit, they're all white. <laughs> okay. We have a great crowd of people here. Yeah, this look good, this look good. I like it, I like it, I like it. Yeah, we got a good crowd. I'm the only black guy here. Who? it looks like my trial. <laughs> Looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. I like this crowd, yeah, yeah. All right, if you like white people, yeah. Hate the white man, shit. Oh yeah, now, uh, oh, no. hey, where are you going, brother? Sit the hell down here, where the hell are you going? I hate when a white guy gets up like the middle of night show like that. Get, sit the hell down, cracker ass. Sit the hell down here in the middle of night working here, cracker ass. Don't sit there and get up in the middle of night working here. All right, don't pick on the guy, huh? He's a mean looking guy. What do you mean, he looks like a killer. Yeah, a killer, I kick his ass. Homo, sit the hell down. Don't pick on the guy. I don't give a shit. Look at him. I see you staring. Let's have a staring contest. Go. This is comedy, brother. You don't just get up and walk out in the middle of the night show. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Why don't you say something to the guy that would make him feel good? The way he looks, attention cannot shock him. <laughs> He's a loser. I can't stand this quite cracker ass. <laughs> that's right, folks. You can laugh all you want. I'll kick his ass right now. All right. Loser, loser, loser. <laughs> and you're white, cracker ass. This was just a joke, man. I was only kidding you. No, no! <laughs> this week, Olivia's mailbox wasn't empty as usual. This week, it contained one of those lovely pink slips that indicated she had a package at the front desk. The clerk was so excited for her. Olivia, you have mail today. Politely, she smiled and took the package. It was a $5 flat rate box. Olivia was reminded of how much her mother loved sending flat rate boxes. Each week in college, Olivia would receive one of these packages, a veritable treasure trove of candy, costume, jewelry, school supplies, anything a college girl could desire. The package that she was handed today was considerably different. On the outside, it looked like a standard $5 flat rate box, but the contents had a macabre difference. This package contained her mother's ashes. Wow. You really have tapped into something very personal. Now, class, what we can take from Mario's story is don't be afraid to be deeply personal. Oscar, please come on time. OK, uh, Jackie, you had something you wanted to read? Uh, yeah. Right.
Rosemary thought she was different. She was always told that by her father, by her mother, by her classmates. She grew up thinking bad about herself. That's why she tried to slit her wrists many times, but she always managed to find a way to get through it. She thought she had met someone who could relate to her, another tortured soul. But this person was more than a tortured soul. He also felt a need to be hateful and cruel. He didn't want to change himself or discover who he really was. He didn't want to move on from a dark past. He wanted to relive it every day. He was pure nasty. I hate him, I hate him. Wow, I, <laughs> wow. Jackie, I, I must say you've really tapped into something very personal to get this latest work. D anybody have any questions? Exactly. I have to say, I thought... Oscar! Uh, Oscar, please wait outside. <sighs> okay, uh... Wow, that was weird. All right, go to Jimmy's on 10th Street. You know the way. What the hell is that banana head doing over there? Pull over, pull over. Stop. What the hell is Frank Stone doing in this neighborhood? It's all for real, all right? That's what I am. I'm a hood. Why are you telling me this? I don't know. I just feel like my head's gonna explode if I don't tell you. Just please, just leave me alone. Please, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Please, just stay away from me. <laughs> what the hell was that all about? Wait here, I'm gonna go see what's going on. get a smile out of you. Almost. Oh. <laughs> Frank, how come you never smile? Mm. Can I ask you something? You never once told me anything about yourself. Well, you know everything about me, but I don't know anything about you. I'm just not that open about myself. My private self, that is. Yeah. Is that why you joke around so much? To hide that private self? No, that that's not why. Look, you know, if you don't want to talk about it, it's okay. Oh. Well, I... I married this really rich guy that I didn't even love. But... I figured I'd have everything. 
but it wasn't really enough. But then we had a beautiful daughter, beautiful, beautiful daughter. And um, my husband left me and he got full custody of her and I can't even visit her. So you see, I all I, all I want to do is just call her, tell her I'm sorry and that I that I love her. Um, but I can't. You listen to me. I gotta go right now. Where are you going? I gotta go. But when I get back, you and me. I'm gonna take you to see your daughter. But she doesn't even know me. She doesn't know me at all anymore. She knows who you are. And believe me, there's no time like the present to get reacquainted. Everything's gonna be all right, Jackie. You'll see. I'll be back in a few hours. Frank, have a seat. How have you a doing, seat. Frank? Today is your lucky day, Frank. We got a call from our boys out in Vegas, and they need somebody from back east to run the security at the casino and to oversee all the used jewelry business they got out there. And I couldn't think of anybody but you, Frank. Me? Yeah. Oh. For how long? How long? <laughs> For as long as it takes, Frank, you're gonna be making a cool 200 grand there. $200,000? Yeah. That's a lot of money, Tony. Yeah, you know, you go out there, you work hard, you find one of those showgirls, you know, settle down with her a little bit, and be happy for once in your life, you miserable bastard. You know what I mean? The 200 grand make anybody happy, right? When am I supposed to leave? First flight tomorrow. Hey, what's the matter? You, you seem disinterested, Frank. No, that's not it. It's just that, you know, I got a little something I got to take care of with someone. But, you know, I'll definitely make the flight, Tony. OK. Is there anything else? Yeah, yeah, just one more uh, uh, little thing. Uh, when you get out there, I was just wondering if you're gonna write any more stories about me and my operation. Kill that rat bastard. No, 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 Vinny, Vinny, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe we shouldn't do it here. You know what? Just take him down the warehouse and chop him up. Chop them up. We don't say what? Hey, why don't you keep smoking? Hey, burn out. 
potential to be advised to question one person. How you doing, Frank? Mind if we talk to you for a minute? I don't think you heard us. Hey, Frank, can you hear us? How you feeling, Frank? Been in a coma for a few weeks. I'm Detective Mentega, this Detective Maz. We're from the Organized Crime Unit. We'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Would you mind explaining to us how you ended up in the trunk of Vinnie Galino's car? Yeah, Vinny Galino. He works for Tony Forte. Did you owe him and his boss some money? Come on, you know who we're talking about. Tony Forte, AKA Tough Tony. Did you owe them money? <laughs> Come on, Frank. <laughs> Don't play dumb shit with us, all right? We're not rookies. We've been around a long time. You obviously must have done something to piss them off. Huh? What was it? Did you get caught skimming off the top or what? <laughs> you mind telling us what's so funny? <laughs> This guy's been us. <laughs> so he's not crazy. Yeah. Well, his head has no structural damage, but it's hard to say at this point without doing any further tests. You think maybe he's trying to put one over on us? I don't think so. Unbelievable. The one guy we find him, he's nuts. Anything he says is not gonna hold up in court. You know that. Yeah. But I'm not buying it. Thanks, Doc. You know, I, I came into this world full of piss and vinegar. You know, I started uh, making my bones by running numbers for Hunchback Charlie and the Ninth Avenue boys. And I was still in junior high school when I did that. You know, I ran porn theaters, strip clubs, I had a stable. 20 girls working for me. I started putting some money out in the street, charging a vig that no one could compete with. You know, I made a lot of money for those fellas. I made some serious scratch. You know, but then, the Babanya, shooting up four times a day, lost everything I had, wound up, uh, doing 10 years in jail for armed robbery. 10 years. You know, but I, when I got out, I was clean. And I wanted to get back into the business, you know? So I had a, an uncle vouch for me. And I went back into action. And now, it's taken me 30 years, 30 years to get my reputation back, and I'll be damned if I let some mook like Frank Stone, bring me down. Now, I want that son of a bitch taken care of. I want him put on ice. And I want that done now. I hate to be the one who told you so, Tony, but I told you so.
No matter where you roam. <laughs> they call it the blue. <laughs> I have to sit next to you. Uh, I gotta sit next to you. <laughs> What's so funny, man? What is so goddamn funny? Come on, white boy, share with me the joke. <laughs> See, last week this time, uh, I had a job, I had a car, oh, I had a woman. A woman? I had a woman, white boy. <laughs> I was making good money, Arizona. The place to be, to work for the right to make a living. <laughs> I used to play in a band. A band like rock and roll. <laughs> we played cover songs in the 80s. That's where I met my girl. Well, my ex-girl. Oh. She left me, white boy. Oh, no. She left me for... You're laughing. She left me for a short order cook. A goddamn Mexican! <laughs> a goddamn Mexican! <laughs> uh, dude, uh, I gotta tell you. Uh, dude, that's just wrong, man. My life sucks, white yeah. boy. What's, what's, uh, what's your name, brother? John. <laughs> But you can call me cricket. Everybody calls me cricket. 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 Like a cricket? Cricket. That jumps around? Hey. Cricket. I, I cricket. jump around. Oh, I jump around like a cricket. Oh, <laughs> yeah, cricket, yeah, baby. You. I love you, white boy. You're the best, man. <laughs> I have a tattoo. Yeah? A tattoo of a cricket. Look, 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 look. Oh, look at that. It's a cricket. <laughs> Listen, you know, brother. I really appreciate you opening up to me like this, brother. I mean, really, I do, you know? I mean, from the heart, man. The heart? You know what I'm saying? From the heart, brother. Holy shit, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man! Damn it! God damn it! God damn it! Hey, pal! Finish your drink what and get out. What? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 you throw me out of here for laughing? Is that, you know, I mean, you know, what is wrong with this place? What's wrong? Hey, this place sucks! Hit the God door, man. pal. I want you out of here now. Listen. All right, all right. All right. You. Look, no God hard feelings. My high horse. I'm going to tell something, bro. All right. I'm going, OK? I'm going. Hey, what's that on your nose? Crazy, man! Hey, cricket! Hi. Hello? Hey, listen, I've had a hell of a day. I just broke out of a hospital. <laughs> What the hell are you laughing at? It's true. <laughs> These guys tried to kill me. <laughs> they did. They took guns. They were shooting at me. They shot up the place. They shut up my pillow. <laughs> well, I needed something to wear, so, you know, I borrowed these. <laughs> the guy next to me was dying of TB. I figured he didn't need it. <laughs> You're kind of a fun audience. <laughs> you, you. I love you. Oh. You! <laughs> I had eight dollars stashed in my socks, and I dug it out and stuck it in my pocket as I walked up Broadway towards 137th Street. I saw Flacco standing in front of the subway entrance. What's happening, I said. Not much.
Dear Jackie, it's your friend Frank. I've been meaning to call you for some time now, but thought this note would do. Something happened that changed my life. I'm still not sure what exactly, but all I know is that I'm happy, truly happy for the first time. And I want you to be happy. So I suggest we see your daughter together as originally planned, so you can tell her that you love her. Meet me at the coffee shop tomorrow at three o'clock and we'll leave together. I can't wait to look at your inspiring presence and your beautiful face once again. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to understand me. Your friend always, Frank. and Snowwinkle. What's up, Frank? Paper time's over, Pajama Boy. Enough of the clown routine. Catch any bad guys lately, coppers? Cut the bullshit, Frank, all right? We want you to testify against Tough Tony. I don't want to, you know? I'm having so much fun. Just hanging out, you know, being happy. Why are you protecting this piece of garbage? She tried to have you killed. So did my mother. But I don't hold that against her, huh? Yeah, but I can understand why your mother hated you. I know you five seconds, and I can't stand you. Detective, you should really try a more refreshing breath mint. <laughs> you think you're crazy, huh, Frank? Huh, look at that. But I'm the one who's crazy around here. I'm from East New York, Brooklyn, kid. We used to throw people off rooftops, stick up gangsters, rob drug dealers, then we sell it back to them. So don't sit here and think you're the only one that's crazy. And let me tell you something. If I didn't have this badge, I forget that I'm a cop. <laughs> I'd really listen to that, Frank. What are you gonna do? You could throw me off a rooftop? <laughs> <laughs> they keep laughing. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to meet that girl that you like? Jackie, right? I got some for you. You're gonna like this. She's waiting for you at this address. Now that's funny. Is Jackie Martin here?
and take us. I told you, this is the best rub and tub joint in the city, bar none. See, this is what I'm oh, talking about. Nice. Hello, follow me, please. Sure, anywhere. Yeah, it's me. Is it each? I have a, a problem that needs fixing. Che stai domandando? I found this rat in my kitchen, and it needs to be exterminated right away. Che cosa mi stai domandando? I want you to get me the best exterminator that money can buy. That's what I want. Io c'è un più meglio, capisci? He's the best. Io più meglio. All right, set up a meeting. Va bene, non ti preoccupare. What should I call you? What do you call yourself?
Lucifer. Lucifer. I'm going to give you a chance to live up to that name because this this isn't business. This 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 is personal. I want you to cause Frank Stone more pain and suffering than humanly possible. I want you to cause him more pain and suffering than you ever caused anybody ever. Do do we understand each other? Frank, open up. We have a search warrant. Frank, open up. You think he's in there? Come on, Frank, or we're gonna bust down the door. Frank, open up. Did you get him? I asked you a question. Did you kill him? Did you kill Frank Stone? What's the matter with you?
All right, Frank. You got me. So just do what you gotta do. All right, I just made peace with my maker. I don't care about dying. Go ahead, do what you gotta do. Do you really think a one-minute prayer is gonna straighten things out with the big guy upstairs, Tony? Yeah, I do. He knows what I did was out of necessity. Necessity? That's the feeling of pain and agony that you cause people out of necessity. I'm an avenging angel, Tony. This time you hurt the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I feel better. I used, to, I used to be a bit of a partier. I used to drink too much. A lot of people say to me, uh, Art, what's a wild night of drinking to you? You look like you've had a few, and I have. A wild night of drinking to me is when you drink too much, and eventually you pass out, and when you wake up, you're naked in a police car with two cops. But the weird part is, you're driving. <laughs> that would be a wild night of drinking. Not for you, man. That's like a Tuesday night for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I did a lot of drugs as well. Uh, I, the reason I did drugs was I think the anti-drug slogans when I was a kid were bad. Like, remember hugs are better than drugs? That didn't work for me. Uh, my mother used to scream that at me as I left the house. Remember, hugs are better than drugs, and I believed her. I believed everything my mother said until the first time I got high at a party. <laughs> I leaned back and I was like, wow, this is way better than when my mother hugs me. <laughs> what else has she been lying to me about? Oh my God. Do I not have great bone structure? <laughs> Am I not the best looking boy in New Jersey? <laughs> Hugs are great, but better than drugs? Come on, let's not lie to the kids. Uh, let me put it to you this way. I never drove to Harlem at 4 a.m. to get somebody to hug me. <laughs> hey, Carlos, here's 20 bucks. Just put your arms around me. <laughs> And I grew up with a domineering mother. She would stay stuff at the top of her lungs, screaming at me. Some bad, some good. It was confusing. I don't know what to do. She would say stuff like, I hate you. I never want to see you again. Are you hungry? <laughs> Get out of this house and never come back. There are chicken cutlets in the refrigerator. <laughs> and since then, I gained some weight. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had some weight issues. Uh, I tried to lose weight. Someone said, oh, you want to lose weight? You should go swimming. I've never been swimming before in my life. And that's because it's never been more than a half an hour since I last ate. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Any questions? No? All right, then, well, let's move on. From nothingness came I, and it is where I shall go. Well, at least that's what I used to think. During those lonely days and sleepless nights, to pacify my soul, I would say these words. They made me somehow understand my existence until I had to live another day of coldness. And I lived those days and wept like all men who contemplate their agony. Then, like a ray of sun peeking through the clouds, you came shining onto me with a radiance only the birds of paradise could understand, bringing forth wisdom and beauty, compassion and understanding, mercy. Then, without warning, you left this world, but not without teaching me who I am and what I should be and where I should go and it is that which I am most grateful for, that you taught me to see the light. Have a good night, Tony. I'll see you tomorrow. <clears throat> Tony, I changed my mind.
I'm a person that knew Frank Stone, okay? When he was a little, little boy. Before he had a chance to turn his rage on the world. Okay? Who are you? And if you know, you'd be the first person I ever met that did. Okay? I got nothing else to say to you. Now, many men don't mean this when they say it, but I do. If you don't leave here right now, I'm gonna kill you, okay? <laughs>